Hey guys, it's Miss Cassidy again. Hope everyone's doing well. All right, just like every day, it's become kind of like a religion for us. Definitely something we re we're reminded of every day. Remember to write your name, date, grade, and section, which is your heading. Below that, you have to always write your objective and your I can statement. Your objective for today is to identify the main idea and supporting details. And your I can statement is I can understand the story's main idea. So this week we start a whole new story. It's called Are Bionic Superhumans on the Horizon? And this is an informational text. And it was written by Ramas Naam. Our essential question remains the same. Remember that through each unit, our essential question will always be the same. At the end of the unit, we'll have a completely new question for the upcoming unit. Does technology improve or control our lives? Really think about that, guys. Analyze it because at the end, we have to come up with good answers for that question based on the stories we go along reading. So for our quick start activity today, it says if a scientist could implant, that means put into your body, a device inside you that made you smarter, faster, or stronger, would you have that surgery? What if the procedure were risky or expensive? Risking being that you guys would be at risk in some way, shape, or form. Discuss your reaction with the class. This is something we can discuss in class, or it's something you can also do in your notebook in case you didn't get into class on time for any reason or another. So think about that for a second, really analyze, and then come up with an answer. Identify main idea and details. How can you understand a text when you don't know anything about its topic? You can ask questions about the text as you read. You might try rereading the text, let the text teach you by doing the following. One, identify the main idea, which is the most important idea about a topic of each paragraph or section of text. It may be stated directly at the beginning or end of each paragraph or section. And two, every main idea has to have supporting details or information about the main idea to learn more. If the main idea isn't stated, you use these details to infer it. Identifying these elements will help you memorize the text, that is, to briefly retell in your own words the text's main ideas and details. Also, with the genre in this story, which is informational text, there are other elements you should be looking for. One, it provides factual information. Two, it includes evidence to support ideas. And three, it contains text features. Also, it includes many forms such as news articles and essays. So that is what our main topic is going to be today, which, like we said before, is main idea and detail. So I have a little video here from you guys. This is Brain Pop Jr., really nice. And we're going to see what they can tell us about what the main idea is. So everyone, please pay attention and listen carefully. Paragraph? Roller coasters move in different ways. They can loop upside down. Some twist and turn on the tracks. Others rise high in the sky and then drop suddenly. No matter how roller coasters move, I love feeling the wind through my hair. Uh, Moby, you don't have any hair. But this is an awesome paragraph. Your main idea comes through loud and clear. What is a main idea? The main idea is the point of a piece of writing. It can be a big idea the writer wants to get across. The main idea of your paragraph is that roller coasters move in different ways. The topic sentence tells the main idea and lets you know what the rest of the paragraph will be about. Let's see. Your topic sentence is, roller coasters move in different ways. 
But there are other sentences here that help explain the main idea. Why are supporting details important? I know that a detail is a piece of information, and when you support something, you hold it up. Your paragraph has three supporting details that describe how roller coasters move. Roller coasters can loop upside down. Some twist and turn on the tracks. Others rise high in the sky and then drop suddenly. Hmm, it's easy to find the main idea in one paragraph, but books can have a lot of paragraphs. How do you find the main idea in a nonfiction book? I know that a book can have one big main idea. And each chapter has a main idea that supports the big idea of the book. And those chapters have paragraphs with main ideas that support the chapter. I think the main idea of this whole book is that making roller coasters takes a lot of science and planning. And there are a lot of details to support that. But that's nonfiction. So... How do you find the main idea in a story? This is a great story. The main idea? Mm, not sure. But I can find out by looking for clues in the story. In the story, a girl goes on her first roller coaster. She has butterflies in her stomach and wishes she had never gotten in line. But her big sister promises to hold her tightly. And she winds up having a lot of fun and doesn't even need to hold her big sister's hand. Hmm. I can look at the supporting details to figure out the main idea. The girl was nervous, wanted to leave, and her sister helped her. Right, Moby. The main idea is the girl gets over her fear with a little help. I bet she loved feeling the wind through her hair. But you still don't have hair, Moby. Quite a surprise at the end, right, everyone? Okay, so I hope that cleared up a little bit more about what main ideas and details are. Another part that we're going to go through today <clears throat> excuse me, is analyzing organization. This article has mostly a main idea and supporting details pattern of organization. Near the end, however, it breaks away from this pattern, filling one paragraph with questions and the next with a call to action. As you read, think about why the author uses both types of organization to convey his thesis or the controlling idea of his entire text. Also, pay attention to text features such as like headings, subheadings, photos, and captions. These can help you to make predictions about the text main ideas and organizational patterns making them visually prominent. So here's an example about what we're talking about. In the first chart, well, it's a chart that has four parts, sorry. In the first part, it says type of organization, the main idea and details organization. Each paragraph or text section introduces a main idea and gives examples or details about that. So in this example, it says, we're in the midst of a bionic revolution, yet most of us not knowing it. Around 220,000 uh, people worldwide already walked around with cochlear implants. Now, look at the second type of organization. You have in question and call to action organization. The author poses questions and then tells readers why they ought to do, what they ought to do, sorry. And look at the example. Will only the rich have access to these enhancements? We have a little while to consider these questions, but we ought to start. So as you can see, it's very easy to understand these types, two types of organization. In the first one, they give you info, and then they give you a little more info about what your basic topic is, so you can understand it a little better. And in the second type, which is question and call to action organization, what we do is that we ask questions about the same topic, and then we come up with answers that can either guide us to what we're looking for or even uh, take us further because it leads to another question. So it keeps expanding the information that's given to you. 
All right, guys, last but not least, we have the critical vocabulary. Remember that you must go through all four words. Make sure you understand the meaning of each word. You can still do word networks. I really do recommend them. That way you guys get a little more understanding of what each word is. You know, their synonyms, their antonyms, the word root, related words to it. It's really helpful. So if you guys want to do that and get some extra credit, you can. So you go through the words. You fill in the critical vocabulary part here. And uh, we, we're good to go. So that's what we need to know for today, guys. Analyze organization, the two types that we have. Identifying the main idea and details. And reminding you that our uh, reading for this week is an informational text called Our Bionic Superhumans on the Horizon. Well, that's it for me, guys. Have a great day. Bye.